Um, a lot of what you're saying kind of says what it says what you think about the purpose of music. Um, because basically what you're saying is that we can only contribute so much if we are living a life of just complete emptiness and depression. Um, you know, there have been bazillions of songs that have and bazillions of dollars that have been made off of writing songs about sorrow and about darkness yeah. and emptiness. Um, however, it sounds like you're saying that there's more to it than that. And so I'm curious on what your take is on the purpose of of being a musician and, and contributing to the world and what music is supposed to be or what it is to you. Yeah, and I, I've thought about this quite a bit. Um and part of this is uh, I wouldn't ever want anyone to listen to this and think like he's cracked the code or he's figured it out because I, I still feel like I have no idea like the answer to this. But um, I for a long, long time, I've had a goal of creating music that helps people. And a lot of times if you think about that phrase, you might think like, oh, hey, you know, buy my new song on iTunes and I'm going to donate the money to you know, build, build a well for clean water. And I think that kind of stuff is awesome, but I don't mean using music as a tool to raise money to then help people. I mean, music in and of itself helping people. And I haven't figured out a really tangible way of doing that, but I do know that, um, music can make you think or feel something. It can make you laugh or cry or feel at peace. And I think that by, um, by tuning into that power of music, you can actually um, make the world a better place. Uh, like, I mean, a very dumb example would be, like, I drive differently if I'm listening to, like, Hammock <laughs> than I do when I'm listening to, like, speed metal, which, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. I actually really like some speed metal every now and then. Um, in you know, I'll put it on and it's just like, oh, they're going bananas. This is great. Like they never sing. It's all just yelling. Like, this is great. But I tend to drive faster, you know, when I'm listening to like. <laughs> yes. TJ ro Road Rage, right? Yeah. Cussing and, and at people, cussing at people, I'm, flipping them off well, as you go. I wouldn't. No, uh, still being, I, I feel like I'm probably a, a very tame driver compared to what <laughs> you might be thinking. But, but just the general speed, you know, I might be in the left lane instead of the, the third from the left. Uh, but. Anyway, I do think that there's a that music is powerful in affecting um, people's people's states, and so you know I haven't really figured that out, but I I do know that um, that I I see music now as or I'm trying to see because there, there's still baggage attached to it. There's still days that I get out to the studio and I'm just like in a bad headspace and not a lot gets done and. Um, and I and I wish that I could just kind of snap my fingers and be like, music's great, and um, you know. But I think a lot of it is attached to my mindset when I'm when I'm making it. And so a lot of times, if I'm not doing the hard work of every morning, breathing, getting quiet, and and for me personally, like I I just start out with this very like broad kind of prayer where I'll just basically say like God I give you um I what's the word I give you consent you know to work on me on the deepest levels like I want to be um like united with with God basically and um and then it's kind of like the stuff flows to the surface that I need to deal with you know and for me that's a very important part of my day that, um, doesn't always happen, but, um, but when I do have that time, I, I just feel like the music ends up, I just, I, I don't know. I just feel like so grateful for what music is and for the people in my life and stuff. And when you're operating from a place of gratitude, I just feel like it, it just makes your day a lot better. And it just, makes you feel like you're actually doing something that matters, not just like, you know, I've told you about this before, Eric, but if I'm in a negative headspace, I'll pick up like a guitar. If I have to like write some music or something and I'll, 
I'll play like a C chord and I'll go, you know, and I'll be like, oh, nice C chord. I've never heard that before. <laughs> it's like, oh, maybe, you know, what could I do next? Oh, an A minor. Wow, that would be novel. You know, and you can get to in this place where you feel bitter and it's like, oh, we've only got 12 notes and I'm so limited. <laughs> and, um, I never heard that and, one. And, you know, the life and, sucks, you know, man. Why don't we have more notes yeah. in this life? This is lame. <laughs> yeah, and if you wanna, um, if you wanna go on this rabbit trail, check out this guy named Harry Parch. He uh, developed a system of music that had like, I wanna say it was like thirty. Great. Thir- uh, Twenty-seven. That's or just like when I need. That's just what I need to check yeah. out, man. I, I really yeah, totally. Need to you check guys that should out. check that out. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> any, anywho. Uh, but yeah, then like the the same instrument, the same chords, and the exact same twelve notes. If you're operating from a place of gratitude and just seeing music as a gift and being like, "How crazy is this?" I'm like controlling the way that strings are vibrating in air, and then there's these like posts underneath the strings that are picking up and inducing an electromagnetic signal that then goes through a wire, then goes through another wire that then gets clipped in my distortion pedals and then echoed through the delay pedals and whatever you know the that signal goes into the amp it like goes through some burning hot elect electron tubes um i wish i knew more about those and then it goes to a speaker which then moves air again which creates a pressure wave which then the diaphragm of the microphone picks up and induces into another electromagnetic signal and then goes into your computer which then encodes a wave into a series of ones and zeros. <laughs> I mean, there's just so much amazing stuff that, that is going on. And you just realize like, wow, you you play that C chord and you play that A minor and you're like, this is incredible, you know? Wow. And so it's the same exact notes, the same exact gear, chords, whatever, end up being like magical. And you pick something up and even though it is a C major chord and an A minor, something new comes out of it and you realize that you know even within our 12 note system of music it's like there are limitless possibilities hmm. man i love that we're talking about this and, and that we're kind of getting the inside look at your brain um but not just your brain but your your approach to music because i think you know we expose things like uh the technical aspect of you know how do you do that well you know i use this gear and i do this kind of thing with this kind of guitar and well this is the brand you know and all this stuff but that is so little about what creativity is about and whether you're a painter or a graphic artist or a musician 90 percent or more of it is really about you as a person and what's coming out of you and about yeah. your state of being as you're creating and your purpose in it and i love I love what we're talking about that this is a part of our lives and I love that you have um, you talk about you know what not understanding the process not understanding how making music can can affect somebody Um, and I don't think you ever will I don't think our purpose is to understand it and I think that's the mystery and the beauty of music and art is that you just do it with an intentionality to to heal someone or to be light to someone yeah or to lift someone's spirits and you don't know exactly how to do that and i don't think you ever will you just somehow that's what comes out of you if that's the place that you are in and um yeah i i had an experience once where i played a gig and um this guy who's just an an awesome um friend and fan um came to me and said you know you probably don't know this but you saved my life and i i was just like what what are you talking about i've never saved anybody's life before and he said um i was sitting across the street with uh, a gun and um Hmm. i was ready to do myself in and for some reason i can't remember why he he pushed play or whatever but played a future forestry song and he said he decided at that moment that that was not where he was supposed to be and somehow it lifted him out of that and um that was an experience that i'll never forget because i didn't you know when i wrote i'm not even sure what song he was listening to but i didn't um obviously i i've never written a song to stop somebody from from suicide Um, yeah and yet somehow this the song had a power in it to 
to bring somebody um, out of that place. And so I'll never know how that works, um, but I will al always continue to strive to to make music like that. And so um, I really appreciate having a friend in you and somebody who's kind of walked the path um, and seen um, kind of the, the darker and the brighter side of things. Um, not meaning to quote the uh, the Traveler song. Traveler song, um, yeah. If you travel here, uh, <laughs> you will feel it all, the brightest and the darkest. But we kind of have uh, in, in our travels together, and I, I really appreciate uh, sharing that together. Yeah, yeah, likewise. It is pretty crazy to think about the ripple effect that music can have because once, once you get it out there, it's like you have no idea what it's doing, you know? Like <laughs> it could be on in the background while people are like yelling at each other <laughs> i mean <that laughs> that's out of it like that negative. way but yeah. that's true i'm sure that's happened many times <laughs> it's, you're like if you find her i can't believe you bought that thing on ebay <laughs> you know um <laughs> or you know it could be like literally saving someone's life and i think that's um that's the really the cool thing about there's like an exponential quality to it you know where you put something out in the world and you kind of let it go and you're like, I don't know. There's something really cool about not knowing what's going on Absolutely. involving your music. Yeah. It's almost like, I don't want to know, man. I just want to be a part of the process and just, just keep creating. But TJ, thank you so much for sharing your life and the creative process. And um, thank you for your friendship and for doing this first interview with me. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on and right back at you. I hope uh, I hope we didn't um, blow up anybody's speakers. If you leave, I'll still be close to you.